going to bring in former acting U.S. Attorney General Matthew Whitaker and Harvard Law Professor Emeritus Alan Dershowitz. Alan is also the author of a hot-selling book. Bestseller is now on the author of the new book, Get Trump. And Alan, this could not be more uh, appropriate for what we're talking about this morning. The grand jury is on. It's off. It's canceled. We're waiting to see what happens next week. Assess where we are with a potential indictment of Donald Trump. Well, I don't think an indictment can actually come forward now after the comments made by Costello. He has proved that the main witness is going to be a perjuring liar on the witness stand. And that puts the district attorney in a terrible position. If he uses Cohn as a witness, he could actually lose his bar license. It's unethical to put a witness on the stand who you know is lying, and he has to know that Cohn will be lying. Or he tries the case without Cohn, which is very difficult. Or he does the right thing. He drops the case. In, in Get Trump, I go through each of the four cases against Donald Trump, and I prove by precedent and evidence that none of the four cases has any basis in law. All four of them are politically motivated. And I think the worst and the weakest case is the one in New York, which is based on a sworn, uh, admitted uh, perjurer who lied to his own lawyers. You know, recently a court said if you lie to your lawyer, you lose the privilege because that's so bad. But we know that, uh, that he lied to his lawyers. His lawyers have essentially broken the privilege and said that he lied to us. He told us he was the only one involved in this payment, that nobody else was involved. How is he going to explain on the witness stand, did you lie now, did you lie then? Nobody is going to believe him. So this is the possible case to bring against Trump. And I would hope that maybe grand jurors finally would wake up and say, look, we're not ham sandwiches here. Yeah. We're going to stand up for the law. And the law says, no, you don't indict under these circumstances. Matt Whitaker, it all becomes even more appalling when you see what's going on on the Biden side with these bank records indicating money that was taken in from communist China and distributed to certain Biden family members. How do you see this situation? Yeah, good morning, Maria. It's good to be with you. I see this situation as a, a pure example of the two-tiered system of justice. You know, uh, Attorney General Robert Jackson in 1940 warned us of, of this exact situation where he said the most dangerous power of a prosecutor was targeting individuals instead of going after the cases that should be the priorities. And that's exactly what's happening in Alvin Bragg's case and also this Department of Justice federally that's not putting the resources to Senator Johnson's point into the Biden investigation and is, it is starving it of the necessary resources to do the international investigation of corruption. Yep. Well, we, we just heard from Senator Johnson. He started this investigation a long time ago. He actually did reveal bank records. And isn't it interesting that he got those records from a Chinese bank? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the fact yeah, it is that Maria. he's not... Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Matt. Yeah, I mean, it is interesting that um, we, we understand that prosecutors have tremendous power and ability to subpoena records from, you know, both internationally, which takes more time, in my experience, uh, through the processes that we have with other countries, but uh, more importantly, that the U.S. banks aren't cooperating. I mean, this is a slow play to try to run the clock out of the Biden corruption investigations so that they never see the light of day. Alan. Yeah, uh, look, we have a two-tier system of justice. Uh, there's no doubt at all that if his name was not Donald Trump, there'd be no investigation of him. You know, the title of my book, I didn't invent it, Get Trump. It comes from a campaign pledge made by the attorney general of New York when she was running for re-election. She promised that if she were elected, she would, quote, get Trump. And Bragg said the same thing. So they violated this great Justice Jackson. But, quote, they first targeted the individual. They both promised they would get Trump. Then they said, let's rummage through the statute books and see what we can find. Mm -hmm. And they rubbished, and they couldn't find anything. They couldn't find a statutory violation. So they made one up that was beyond the statute of limitations that involved combining a misdemeanor that never occurred with a federal felony or maybe wow. a state felony. This is the worst example of prosecutorial abuse of discretion I have seen in my 60 years of practicing criminal law. That's wow. why I wrote Trump. Not about Trump. It's about us. Because today yeah. it's Trump. Tomorrow it's a Democrat. 
the day after tomorrow with your Uncle Charlie and your nephew and your niece. This is one of the most dangerous precedents that any prosecutor has ever tried to establish in the United States. I hope the grand jury will stop him, or I hope that politicians, both Democrats and Republicans, will say yeah. to him, no, you can't bring this case. And, and that is why, Matt, Jim Jordan, the chairman of the Judiciary Committee, is investigating this. And he is investigating this, what he's calling an unprecedented abuse and politically motivated Trump probe. But uh, is that going to be enough? He needs uh, to get the DOJ. I mean, what can the Oversight Committee and the Judiciary Committee do at the end of the day? They could make recommendations, but you need a willing uh, yeah. DOJ to actually come down with a prosecution. Yeah, this is going to put an interesting contrast in what we've seen previously. Remember, we were told that the select committee on January 6th uh, had unfettered power to get whatever they wanted and no one should get in their way. And if you got in their way, they were going to hold you in contempt. And so now Alvin Bragg has been subpoenaed. The Congress has legitimate interests, which were outlined in their letter, which included the spending of federal money, the use of federal resources, the special counsel's uh, regulation, uh, and how the interaction between state and federal prosecutors work. And so I mm -hmm. think once, if Alvin Bragg doesn't show up, but he's held in contempt by Congress, what does the Department of Justice do? Do they act uh, like they did in the last um, Congress, or do they, are they purely partisan like we think they are, and, and they don't do anything and let it die on the vine? Yeah. Well, unfortunately, our <laughs> adversaries are watching all of this as well. Final word, Alan. Yeah. We have to remember, too, that January 6th committee is complicit in this. They actually doctored the tape of President mm. Trump's speech on January 6th. They deliberately omitted the words peacefully and patriotically. If a lawyer did that, that wow. lawyer would be subject to disbarment. And so we're seeing this in Washington. We're seeing this in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. We're seeing it in Florida. And mostly wow. we're seeing it in New York. America's legal system is at stake here. And, out, uh, and attorney, District Attorney Bragg should do the right thing. And really, drop this case. really an important point there. Gentlemen, thank you. We will continue to keep a spotlight you, on Brad. it. Former acting U.S. Attorney General Matt Whitaker and Harvard Law Professor Emeritus Alan Dershowitz. Thank you, gentlemen. We will continue thank to watch. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.